where news comes first. This is ABC7 Extra. Good evening, I'm Selwyn Science, and this is ABC7 Extra Sunday Edition. I want to thank you for permitting us into your homes this Sunday evening. It's a parent's worst nightmare, receiving a text from their child's school alerting them about a threat to the school their child attends. Unfortunately, it's become all too familiar. Multiple law enforcement agencies converging on school grounds following reports of threats, either of someone with a weapon or worse yet, a bomb. Students under lockdown while officers and agents scour the school investigating, students waiting for the all clear while parents rush to their child's school, helplessly waiting for any nugget of information. Officials are warning the public of the consequences students and their parents can face if they make a false threat. It comes as law enforcement has seen a rise in threats made against schools. Officials say most of these threats are generated on school media from students as a joke. They remind the community threats of any kind are taken very seriously and have consequences. ABC 7's Brianna Perez reports for ABC 7 Extra Sunday edition. This country is fed up with violence in our schools and we will not tolerate threats against it. Borderland law enforcement agencies unite to combat the rise in school threats. Over the past two weeks, we the FBI have worked eight of these school threats with our partners. And what I've been told by the independent school district police departments is they're facing at least three of these threats a day. We saw this only days ago at Pebble Hills High School after a video circulated on social media of a teen with a gun. It prompted a lockdown, but was later deemed not credible. El Paso District Attorney Bill Hicks assured the community that if someone takes a gun to school, they will be prosecuted. He said taking a gun to school is a third degree felony and carries with it a punishment range of two to 10 years in prison and a fine up to $10,000. But students are not the only ones who can face consequences. If you're a parent and you negligently make a firearm available to a child, you could be looking at up to a year in the county jail and a fine of up to $4,000. Officials say these cars resemble the law enforcement response we see when area schools receive a threat, which can essentially take away from resources throughout the community if deemed a hoax. The simplest threat can cause panic and terror, impacting entire communities. It can lead to violence, injury, or death. Parents need to have this conversation with their kids and they need to talk to them clearly about what is acceptable behavior online and what is not. That was ABC 7's Brianna Perez reporting for Sunday Extra. Officials remind the public that if you see something, say something. If you have any tips for law enforcement, they can ask you to call Crime Stoppers at 915-566-8477. The number again, 566-8477. Now, joining us to talk about school threats and school safety is El Paso Independent School District Assistant Superintendent Mark Paz. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Sitting next to him is EPISD Police Chief Manuel Chavira. All, thank you as well, Mr. Chavira. Thank you. Our chief. Also joining us is Socorro Independent School District Police Chief George Johnson. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Johnson. Thank you. As well as Assistant Superintendent Dr. Andrea Cruz. Thank you all for joining us to talk about this very important topic. I want to start with the police chiefs. Chief Chavira, you heard what law enforcement as well as District Attorney Bill Hicks are talking about the rising number of school threats. Is the situation that bad that we're getting so many threats and what does, uh, what, what, what does that do to your resources? It, it is uh, getting to be that bad. Uh, the FBI had some statistics that uh, Special Agent in Charge Jeff Downey shared at the press conference earlier this week where there was a rise of about 60 percent from 2021 to 2022 uh, in the amount of uh, threats or, or hoaxes that are being called into the schools. And uh, what it does, it takes a lot of the resources away from our campuses or from actual emergencies. And uh, uh, we have... Uh, the, the district, uh, 254 square miles that we need to cover, but anytime there's a threat or even a hoax threat at any of the campuses, we take them very seriously. We will respond and uh, we will uh, investigate every threat seriously and to its uh, conclusion. Chief Johnson, your thoughts? Is SISD seeing a rise in threats as well? And what does it do to your resources? Well, I don't believe that the, um, the actual rise is just with SISD alone. I think all school districts across the United States are seeing different um, rises in, in um, crimes and in incidents like this. Um, our resources are sometimes um, stretched out to the, the peak of where we can go, but the good thing is that 
with the agencies that we have here locally, we do have a lot of uh, cooperation within agencies, and we help each other with anything that comes up. Assistant Superintendent Paz, your thoughts on the rising number of threats? Obviously, you're not with law enforcement, but from an administrative level, what does this do to your, to your school district? Well, it's, a, it's an extreme challenge for our school district because we can't take it lightly. We have to act upon those threats and investigate. So if you think about those situations that are occurring at campus, you have every resource on that campus coming to a halt to address those threats. While that's happening, classroom instruction stops. Everything halts. Everything goes towards addressing that immediate threat to investigate that. So while that's happening, the impact that it's having in the classroom on the students has a tremendous uh, challenge for a school in the school district to be able to get back to the new normal once it's, uh, the threat has been uh, terminated or seen as, as a non-threat. And so academically, it's taken a dramat dramatic toll on our students and our classrooms, plus the social, the social emotional uh, damage that it's doing to students every time a threat comes up, but that does become that traumatic moment for students that's hard to shake off on in an instance. Dr. Cruz, let's talk about that. Uh, obviously, this is happening in both school districts, actually districts throughout the borderland. What does that do to the psyche, not just for the parents, for students, but also for administrative staff and teachers? Well, there's this heightened sense of um, awareness and fear amongst uh, faculty, our staff, our students. Um, anytime there's a threat, you know, of course it's going to affect them psychologically, emotionally. Um, and so every time there's a threat and we're responding, we're taking every threat seriously, um, and we do have a serious response, we take every response, uh, every threat seriously, um, you know, it does impact um, everyone. Uh, the stress levels are up, um, like Mr. Paz was sharing, you know, it impacts instructional time, um, focus is off of instruction and um, you know the the resources both emotional um, all kinds of resource physical um, down to our you know our our resources in the school system counselors etc um, they're taken away from that and so um, you know it's going to take all of us to make sure that we're all safe we're secure and, c and learning can continue and the focus can remain on instruction. All right, thank you. Well, right now you're watching ABC7 National. We're going to take a quick break. Still ahead, I'll ask my guest if the two school districts are doing anything differently in response to the rising threats to school. But before we go to break, we went out to the UTEP campus and asked students if they feel family members in the area schools are safe. Listen. It does worry me because especially what happened at Sail Vista, it's a no gun zone there's not you're not allowed to even even if you're licensed to carry you're not supposed to have a gun but they still were able to bring it in so even though this campus is a no gun zone you never know what people have in their backpacks i do have a little cousin that does go to like she's in elementary school and i have another one in high school and it does worry me a lot because they went to pebble hills high school so I was a little scared. I do have a nephew and uh, he's eight years old right now, so second grade. And I do go teaching him maybe some safety, especially with all like the gun violence happening. And we just have those conversations just to make sure he's always okay. You're watching ABC7 Extra Sunday Edition where news comes first. The race is on to Casa Buick GMC. Don't let our incredible selection of trucks and SUVs pass you by. We're ready to get you into a new vehicle, fast. And we'll get you across the finish line with great service. For a limited time, Casa Buick GMC is matching your sales tax on any vehicle. You could save thousands. You're in the winner's circle when you shop Casa Buick GMC, home of the nice guys. Yeah! yeah!
Truck Month starts now at Shamali Ford. Score below MSRP pricing on all your favorites. New 2022 Ford F-150 STX Sports, just $45,990. Three grand off MSRP on all 2022 Ford Edges in stock. One grand off MSRP on all 2022 Escapes and 2022 Explorers in stock. Plus 0% APR, zero down, and no payments for 90 days. Wow, that's a low price. I-10 and Lee Trevino, right on the corner and always right on the price. ShamaliFord.com. Here at ABC7, we know how busy life can be. We're live in 20 seconds. Oh my Got it. With intensity this high? Top story's been updated. Perfect. We've developed a focus and understanding that every minute of your day counts. That's why we work hard while you're still sleeping. To prepare up-to-date news, weather, traffic, and information to start your day the right way. Experience you can count on. Information you can trust. Here we go in three, two, one. Rise and shine, El Paso. I'm Hillary Florin. And I'm Saul Sainz. The district attorney's office takes these cases very seriously. Taking a gun to a school is a third degree felony. It carries with it a punishment range of two to 10 years in prison and a fine of up to $10,000. That was District Attorney Bill Hicks. Welcome back to ABC 7 Extra Sunday Edition. I also want to welcome our guest, El Paso Independent School District Assistant Superintendent Mark Paz. Sitting next to him is EPISD Police Chief Manuel Chavira. Also joining us is Socorro Independent School District Police Chief George Johnson. And sitting next to him, Superintendent Dr. Assistant Superintendent Dr. Andrea, Andrea Cruz. Now, I'll start with you this time, Ms. Cruz. You just heard the DA saying making threats are so serious to carry a prison sentence of up to 10 years in prison. Is your school district getting this message out to students and how? Thank you. We are doing our best to get that message out to students. Um, we are participating in a campaign that, um, you know, unified organizations are also passing along to our students and families that every threat is taken seriously um, and they are punishable. Um, you know, we are advertising this via social media. Um, of course, conversations across campus, through our counseling department, and most definitely from our administrators. So is, it, is there ever like a one-on-one, -on -one, or is it a group session type deal where you all are talking to students and saying, hey guys, you gotta stop this, you know, this is, t this is very serious and you could face prison. Ms. Ms. These Ruth? are, we address these in both manners. Uh, they are one-on-one -on -one conversations with particular individuals that are involved in these situations. Um, with families and of course it's being addressed you know across our PA system social media and large groups um, in conversations with families at our various uh, departmental meetings uh, parental meetings that we have. Mr. Paz how's your school district getting this message across and are they are the students taking this seriously because you know I remember when I was in high school which was a long time ago and yes there were cars back at that time but I remember when I was in high school and a lot of times it was you know, white noise, whatever was going over the intercom. How is your school district getting this message across and are students taking this seriously? We mirror a lot of the things that SIS, SISD are doing. We are having those conversations with our parents, with our campus, with not only the faculty and staff to share on a daily basis in the classroom with the students, but large group meetings with our students as well. We just had parent teacher conference and a lot of the principals took that advantage of, of that opportunity to speak to the parents about this rise and making sure that they can share the consequences when these moments occur. Our See Something, Say Something campaign has been beneficial. Students are letting us know when they're hearing something or seeing something or, that doesn't look appropriate and needs to be addressed and allows us to investigate at the campus level. And obviously, if it needs to rise, we call law enforcement to help support us in that investigation. They're right there by our side to do so. And in those situations where it may not come out to uh, anything, it just is you know, hearsay, then we can have those one-on-one -on -one conversations with the families, reassuring them that things are safe, but that the kids did something uh, appropriate. They did let us know when things were uh, that they heard something or they saw something in the classroom that didn't look appropriate. We want that to continue. That does allow us to uh, really get to the root cause of that, of, that, of that incident that may be occurring on campus or things that may be said. And then redirect those conversations for those students who may make an inappropriate comment that triggered a student to go tell administration or tell police services and then say, look, that is not the appropriate action. So we bring in the counselors, we bring in the administration, we bring in the families and really start uh, teaching and showing uh, students how to cope what their stress is, how to determine what's appropriate talking, what's not at the school level. And really we have to be able to re-educate 
students that were in uh, their homes locked up for locked down in, in during COVID for for months on end how to re-engage re in the classroom how to have the appropriate conversations uh, with their peers and really kind of get back to a sense of calm and a sense of safety that we're used to and accustomed to at the schools. Chief, do you recall some moment in time where, uh, say, a superintendent or the assistant superintendent comes to you and says, look, this is what we're hearing online. This is what the see, say, see Something, Say Something campaign has worked. And they come to you and say, we need to investigate this. Has that ever happened and led to maybe possibly the, the, the stopping of, of everything happening or what, could it, what it could trigger? Has it ever happened? There's several of them. There's several, I can I can see it. And as uh, FBI statistics show, there's been an, an average of about three per day across the school districts. Three per day. All all the school districts. For, if you just uh, do the the averaging of the six thousand calls, uh, uh, it averages about three per day at the at the campuses. Some are are not credible, of course. And uh, but any time we we get a. Uh, uh, notification of a see something or say something or somebody is is uh, trying to warn us or alert us about something, we take immediate action. We work with our law enforcement partners, as you saw on uh, Tuesday's press conference. We do have uh, familiarity among all of our law enforcement partners. We want to maintain that familiarity so we have consistency in all of our responses so that we have uh, a good collaboration and cooperation so that we can remain efficient and effective in all of our responses throughout the community. Chief Johnson, you just heard uh, Chief Chavita say that about three averaging three threats a day. That's a lot. Is that happening in your school district? And do you believe that more needs to be done to finally put an end to these threats? Well, in all honesty, as Chief Chavita was saying, we do have a lot of threats going on. And I couldn't begin to even say what the real cause of the, the problem is. Um, the biggest thing that we have to do and, and we have to consider is that a lot of this starts at home. We have to have our family uh, unit that is has the children to go ahead and start looking into their, their private accounts, start looking in their phones, be more in touch with their children. We do everything that we can while the children or are, the students are in the school, but a lot of it has to do at home too. And with the, the See Something, Say Something campaign, it's very important we do have very good communication with our students and with faculty and with people on social media that always give us information at all times. So we do treat every threat as a real threat or every perceived threat as a real threat. Thank you, Chief. Now, before we go to break, I want to bring up some video that we have of what a threat looks like. But we're going to take the break, and we want to show you this video of just what a threat looks like. This is ABC7 Extra. We come back. I'll ask my guests what it'll take to reduce the number of school threats so students and parents can feel safe, students when they attend school, and parents when they send them off to school. Before we go to break, as we said before, we asked folks at UTIP if they believe family members attending local school, schools should feel safe. Take a listen. I mean, it's very unfortunate, and this is uh, happening too often, unfortunately. I did not feel that El Paso will be affected by it, because when you look from the far away, and it happens in the rest of the country and rest of the world, you feel like, okay, I am immune. It's not going to happen here. But, uh, you know, after August 3rd, uh, the shooting in Walmart, then it hit home. I definitely worried, worried about it a lot more in high school, just because of how easy and how open my campus is. And I didn't think it would change, to be honest, just because of how strongly people believe in like gun laws and like gun rights. But I also have nephews, three of them, and our, two of them are in elementary, and we don't get them the light-up shoes because if they are in lockdown and they have the light-up shoes and it's dark, the perpetrator could see them. And it is a scary, a new scary situation nowadays, but. Um, we just have to <laughs> be safe. The savings are presidential all month long at Oscar Leaser's Hyundai of El Paso. You'll save thousands with zero cash out of pocket, interest rates as low as 2.9% APR, and payments as low as $1.99 a month. And the best part? We have the best inventory we've had in years. We're talking presidential savings on the vehicles you want, like Elantras and Sonatas, Kona's in Tucson, Santa Fe's and Palisades. All in stock today. Not tomorrow, but right now. Let presidential savings soar all month long at Oscar Leaser's Hyundai of El Paso. Hey, you two. So, you've been saving for your dream home? Or perhaps, saving to build a home of your own? 
Maybe it's time for a change. Now is a great time to apply for a First Light mortgage and save up to $3,500 on your closing cost. Apply now and remember, First Light Federal Credit Union. Your better credit union. Dow's and Thomasville Home Furnishings is going to make this President's Day sale a sale to remember. A must-shop sale that should not be missed. Incredible holiday savings up to 50% off. And here's more. Save the tax, plus free financing up to five years and fast delivery. Not bad, right? Incredible holiday savings, save the tax, plus free financing. This President's Day sale checks all the boxes. Definitely a sale to remember. Dow's and Thomasville Home Furnishings President's Day sale. Excitement comes standard with the Honda Accord. And so does the title of most fun to drive mid-size sedan. It's also packed with technology, like available wireless Android Auto integration. And with the Accord Hybrid, the power to bring the road to life. Stand out with the Honda Accord. Contact your Honda dealer today or shop online. Welcome back to ABC 7 Extra Sunday Edition. I want to show you what an online threat looks like, and then I'll get our, our guest response to those threats. I want to welcome back El Paso's Independent School District Assistant Superintendent Mark Paz. Sitting next to him is EPISD Police Chief Manuel Chavira. Also joining us, Socorro Independent School District Police Chief George Johnson, as well as Assistant Superintendent Dr. Andrea Cruz. Thank you so much for taking time to talk to us. I want to ask you all, more or less, we showed video of what an online threat looks like via text. Can you give me a, a sense of what it is that you all are seeing when you get an online threat? And this question is for all of you, but I'll start with you first, uh, Superintendent Mark Paz. So once we get the threat, uh, it's quickly, And what does it look like? Yeah, it varies. I mean, we a lot of it is social media. Sometimes those threats have no uh, local impact whatsoever. They're uh, being replicated from things that have received from all anywhere in the, in the world, right? We're, it's just a screenshot of a bathroom and there may be something on the wall that says, you know, danger. Well, the schools are safe. They're, the kids are safe. That's not even from our campus anywhere. You can look at the tile and maybe it's similar, but the threats are so vague. Um, it, it is hard to really uh, pinpoint the location of where they're on. But a lot of times we know quickly that's not anything that comes from any of our campuses, but we still alert Chief Chavita and his staff and then they run it through uh, their, you know, their, their checks and balances. Um, but what happens is instantly you've got a lot of panicked students, a lot of panicked family members because of this miscellaneous social media threats that are being, uh, you know, I guess re, re, uh, repurposed throughout schools. So a lot of times people don't, or students or parents, don't wait to see the legitimacy of that threat. They merely see it or share it, and then that's when obviously all havoc ensues. Absolutely. That's what's happening a lot of times. It's just they see something, it's got their school's name on it, or it, it appears that it may be going you know, towards a school or students, and it gets circulated quickly. Parents share it with their friends if of those that, who have students at the schools. The kids are sharing it, and it just becomes this this overwhelming cycle of information that is inac inaccurate 99.9% .9 of the time. Uh, Ms. Cruz, is this happening over at Socorro Independent as well, where you see, uh, well, give me an example of what happened over at Pebble Hills. You see either someone talking about someone walking with a gun or something. What's, what's uh, typically what happens at Socorro? So we also receive threats of uh, various natures and from various places, uh, the majority of them being social media, uh, just like our neighbors. Uh, we receive pictures, um, reports of something that's been posted online. Uh, there have been a few situations where uh, there's been something occurring in the community which impacts the schools, and it always does. If there is something that's occurring in the community, there's always some kind of response um, that occurs in our school systems. So we see the exact same thing. Uh, we follow the same process. We take every threat seriously. Uh, we go through our processes, contacting uh, the local authorities and following, um, you know, investigating the situation. Now, do you all locally, and this question is to you, uh, Chief Johnson, do you all locally try to determine whether or not it's legitimate, or do you try to find the authors of these threats, or do you just simply start calling uh, El Paso Police and FBI and everyone else? What happens thereafter when you identify a threat? Well, upon first receiving a, a threat, our first purpose is to find out if it is an actual threat. We treat all of them as actual threats, but there are a lot of things that, that play into that. One of the biggest problems that we have 
is that a lot of people try to throw conjecture into when they see a post. They'll put their own spin onto a, into a, um, a tweet that might have been put out or somebody's post. And as you said before, they'll start saying, well, the threat is to this high school, when it actually was the threat to a, a school that was maybe somewhere in, in East Texas or in the East Coast of the United States. Um, they'll turn back around and start saying, since the, the letters pretty much match the initials for the schools, they'll start uh, throwing on their own spin and it throws everybody off. We uh, sit back, we have a protocol that we go through, we do contact other agencies, we work with the hand in hand with uh, the other school districts, we work hand in hand with the city and the county and with the state. Okay, Chief Chavito, you know what's being, what is done to try to determine uh, who authored that threat? Do you all do that or do you, is that left uh, up to somebody else? It's, it's in-house and also with, uh, with our law enforcement partners. We do look at the threats uh, ourselves, look at the specificity of the content of the threat of the, of the posting. We look to see if there's anything in there that we can identify to any of our local campuses or any of uh, the Paso community. As, as Chief Johnson has mentioned, a lot of times these come in from across the country and uh, uh, people take their own spin on it and, and try to say that it's a local item. But we also work with uh, our law enforcement partners like uh, El Paso P uh, Police Department's Fusion Center and of course we uh, work with our uh, contacts over at uh, the FBI. Special Agent in Charge Jeff Downey has made his team uh, readily available to us 24-7 should we need help and we have uh, contacted him at the late hours uh, so he can put us in contact with somebody that could help us uh, track down the origins of a threat and so that we can ensure that our campuses are safe and that the children feel safe coming to school every day and that's where I want the, the point I want to make our campuses are safe our law enforcement community is ensuring that our campuses are safe it's the safest place for our children to be during the day and uh, that's 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 the the main point we want to stress and that's what special agent in charge uh, Jeff Dunney was trying to do in getting all of the law enforcement agencies together and the prosecutorial agencies together so that we can state that we are taking every threat seriously where uh, hoaxes or threats against our campuses will be will not be tolerated and we will prosecute to the full extent of the law. All right, thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Paz, uh, Chief Chavira, Chief Johnson, and Ms. Cruz, thank you so much for taking time to talk to us. Thank you. Thank you. And I want to thank you for joining us this evening. It's unfortunate that these type of threats are too familiar. They cause panic and fear among students and threats, hence the term terroristic threat. I don't think I'm going too far out on a limb when I say it needs to stop. Before we get into the boy cried wolf, the boy cried wolf reaction, when one day the threat could be all too real. What is real are the consequences. And what I want to repeat is what one FBI agent said, it's not funny, no one is laughing. I'm Saul Sainz, and this has been ABC7 Extra Sunday Edition. Good night y buenas noches. Thank you for watching. ABC7 News is now available on any of these streaming services, as well as the KVIA News and KVIA Weather and Traffic apps.